I'm Marty Stauffer. Last time, we learned about the weasel itself. This time, let's explore the other fierce and fascinating members of the weasel family, from the largest, the sea otter, to the wolverine, badger, fisher, marten, and mink. They're all weasels, sleek and savage. From the northern Rockies to the Pacific coast, members of the weasel family enliven our land. They hunt on the Arctic tundra of Alaska. They frolic in Louisiana swamps. They stalk through the northern forests of Vermont. Weasels are prolific, giving birth to three to eight kits each spring. And they have a large extended family as well. Meet the weasels themselves, the long-tailed, short-tailed, and least weasels. And a weasel with a coat people covet but which smells worse than a skunk, the mink. Its well-armed cousins, the spotted skunk and striped skunk, not only smell, they squirt. Resident prairie weasels, the badger and the nearly extinct black-footed ferret. Two forest-dwelling weasels, the marten with a face like a fox, and its larger relative, the fisher, which preys mainly on rodents and never on fish. The largest and most ferocious land weasel, the wolverine, can chase a bear away from its dinner. Those fun-loving water acrobats, the river otter, and the sea otter. Rolling and bobbing like a cork along the Pacific shoreline, the sea otter frolics in the kelp forest. Its teddy bear face and imploring hands make it one of our favorite creatures to watch. Sea otters float together, wrapped in kelp, to keep from drifting away. In these cold waters, the otter stays warm by eating up to 25% of its own weight a day and by wearing the finest fur coat in the world. The otter has no protective layer of fat like this seal. Also unlike the seal, it has no flippers, but four paws that can lift and carry. 
Since the otter is a mammal which breathes air, it must return frequently to the surface. Whacking the captured abalone against the stone, the otter surfaces with its catch. While sea otters only inhabit coastal areas along our Pacific shore, their smaller cousins, the river otters, explore streams all across the country. This river otter slides into a Colorado stream in search of a meal. Webbed feet and powerful lungs make the otter such an expert swimmer that even trout have difficulty escaping its 30-pound assault. As the otter takes its catch from the stream, it chews off the fins to keep the trout from swimming away. The otter does occasionally take game fish. Still, plenty of fish remain for the otter's human rivals. In the northwest roams a large bear-like weasel, the rare and ferocious wolverine. This wolverine has spotted a coyote and the chance to steal a meal. During the winter, the 50-pound wolverine snowshoes across drifts on its broad paws and occasionally even kills snowbound animals as large as elk and moose. But in warm weather, that advantage is lost, and it must settle for foraging or scavenging. The wolverine relies on its nose more often than it does its skills as a hunter. The coyote senses the wolverine's approach.
quickly it eats what it can of its catch as the marauder draws near. Coyote tries a bluff, but it doesn't dare confront the wolverine. It does dare to outwit him, though. The cunning coyote grabs its lunch and runs. This time, the wolverine is left with only the good smell and a few feathers. Also found in northern and mountain forests is the curious fisher. This is an animal clever enough to dine on porcupine without receiving a multitude of unwanted vaccinations. But is it clever enough to nose around its cousin, the striped skunk, without falling victim to chemical warfare? Looking as if they too are holding their breath, a pair of blue grouse await the outcome. The skunk is losing patience, but the fishers don't heed its warning. watering, one takes to the hills, while the other, bewildered and desperate for an antidote, heads for a plunge in the river. And as much distance as it can get on the other side. Tranquil at last, the skunk goes on its way. Another weasel of the forest is the sleek, bushy-tailed marten. Although the marten's most important prey are ground rodents, mice, and voles, it's also a formidable predator in the trees. The swift red squirrel will have to run for its life once it catches the eye of a hungry marten.
The ongoing cycle of life and death, the struggle is quickly ended. The marten will eat its fill, then store the rest for future use. The prairie is home to a member of the weasel family, which, not too long ago, was believed to be extinct the black-footed ferret. Throughout its history, the ferret has depended on another prairie native, the prairie dog. Prairie dog burrows were its home. Prairie dog meat was the staple of a ferret's diet. Extensive poisoning of prairie dogs on agricultural and ranch lands indirectly destroyed the black-footed ferrets as well. Now, the only known black-footed ferrets live in a research center in Wyoming, where their numbers are slowly growing. Hopefully, someday both black-footed ferrets and prairie dogs will once again scamper freely across their home on the range.
It's now winter on the prairie, and a prairie dog stands sentinel for the colony. Although no black-footed ferrets threaten, other predators, coyotes, and this badger do. Sniffing around a burrow, the badger has caught a fresh scent and knows there's something down there good to eat. The sentinel watches warily as yet another threat draws near. Always ready to take advantage of someone else's hard work, the cagey coyote sidles up alongside. But the badger doesn't agree to the plan. For the moment, the coyote slinks away. And the badger continues preparations for dinner. The unrepentant coyote has only circled to the burrow's back door. This badger is nobody's fool. It sees what the coyote's up to and once again chases the onlooker away. Still undaunted by the badger's protests, the coyote heads back around to the front door, ready for the trapped prairie dog to make a run for it. When it doesn't come out, a well-timed direct attack earns the coyote the prize anyway. short-legged badger doesn't have a chance of winning back the prize. While the prairie watchdog maintains its vigil, the victorious coyote enjoys the stolen dinner. and the badger returns to start all over again. In the spring, a mother mink guards her litter of kits from a prowling raccoon, a dozen times her size. Surprised by the mink's ferocity, the raccoon lumbers on. But when mom goes to the river to fish, the raccoon circles back to the helpless young. Hearing her kit's cries, Mother Mink rushes home to rid her family of this bumbling, though potentially dangerous intruder.
utilizing a scent even stronger than a skunk, the mother mink finally persuades the raccoon to be on its way. In so doing, she demonstrates once again the fighting spirit of the weasel family. Wearing bad reputations and fine fur coats, some species in the weasel family are lucky to have survived. It's good that they did. These expert predators play an essential role in the balance of nature. Hopefully, we will always have weasels, sleek and savage. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.